Welcome to I'd Print That. I'm Andrew. I'm Joe. So what did we do this week, Joe? Oh, did a lot. Uh, I actually got a couple of, uh, got my printer dialed in pretty well. Uh, printed a, a test with the Hatchbox filament that I've had, uh, a blue PLA. Turned out really, really nice. Actually, I left a print on your desk. Oh, yeah, the octopus. I, yeah, I printed that. Saturday, or excuse me, not Saturday, Sunday. Sunday, Sunday. Mm -hmm. And left that on your desk because I was uh, being king in the north this week. And just so you could see just how well it looked. Yeah, it came out really well. It did. I then followed that up by printing some of the uh, filament, one filament. Mm -hmm. Uh, Tried printing with the wood fills, but uh, was not paying attention to the actual sheet and it kept clogging up on me and this was my fault because <laughs> uh, it clearly says nozzle size greater than 0.4 mil. I have a 0.3 mm -hmm. nozzle. So I had to, uh, after some fighting and swearing, I managed to unclog my nozzle and then read the little... Uh, look at the uh, sheet and go, oh, <laughs> silly me. <Derp. laughs> so I, I changed gears rather than trying the wood fills. I used the uh, flex that they sent, the clear clear flex. Mm -hmm. And at its, what they say its default temp is 200. Uh, printed really well. Uh, printed another octopus, which I brought in, uh, I believe it was Wednesday, and showed you. Mm -hmm. There was only one one spot where uh, there wasn't a lot of adhesion, but I think that was because it was just being a hand coil and being flex. It doesn't really want to uncoil that well when it's on a spool. Yeah. <laughs> Not on a spool, just on a straight uh, uh, rod. So it kind of got bound up a little bit until I manually un unstuck it. But, oh, you didn't tell me that. Yeah. But it turned out really well. It was actually pretty nice. Very nice. So I still got a little bit of it, little bit of it left. Probably uh, a quarter or so, maybe I think just over a meter of of that stuff. So I don't know what I'm going to print with it. What else I can print with it? I do want to test out the rest of their PLAs and ABSs that we got, and also that rigid ink stuff. I'll take pictures and post reviews on these guys yeah for sure i do have uh some nozzles that i'll probably be ordering here in the next couple of weeks and they range from uh there are four nozzles in the set uh it's 0 0.2 3, 0 0.3 0 0.4 and 0 0.5 mil that i'll be able to swap out on my uh my perusa nice it'll be really nice for getting that uh getting your resolution higher with that point too yeah be a nice step up and also with the the point four and the point five, I'll be able to use some of the little bit more abrasive uh, fills like the woods and stuff. Mm -hmm. I'll probably wind up testing the uh, uh, copper and aluminum YS that you got. Oh yeah, yeah. Also, so oh yeah, I also have the YS filaments I want to be te want to test as well. So. Yeah, I still got piles of stuff to test. In addition to actually being getting to a point where I can start testing uh, the filaments that we receive, uh, also ordered uh, a printer from G Tech. They contacted me and said, "Hey, we have this new Me Creator Two printer. That's a, just a little 160 millimeter cubed. It's like the Da Vinci. It's got the the X and Y are stationary, and the Z axis. Core is, H. Yeah." Uh, yeah, it's in the Core H style printer with okay. the, uh, the four post solid frame. Yep. Metal frame. And, uh, your Z is your up and down. Your Z actually moves up and down. Right. And your X and Y are on a stationary carriage. Yeah. It's stationary plane. Yeah. Um, but yeah, your Z goes up and down. And so it's, it's volatile after the solid doodle as well. Right. Yeah. Um, this is a quite an upgrade. Looks, I mean, just in looks mm -hmm. from the Me Creator, which is their original printer, um, that style Core H bot. Um, a lot of people had 
complaints on it. I, I read all the reviews that I found mm-hmm. on the uh, Me Creator, and a lot of people were very disappointed in uh, A, um, how rigid the frame was, and B, uh, all the electronics kind of were just open air bolted onto the back. Yeah, they've they've taken in everything is now uh, enclosed. It's mm-hmm. all under... It's in the base. Uh, in, the, in the base. It looks nice. Uh mm-hmm. Mine has been shipped. It should be here. They say the uh, around the twenty fourth. Yeah, uh, it's actually seven from the seventeenth to the twenty fourth. But so when that arrives, I'll probably do an unboxing video and just uh, kind of once over visually before I plug it in and start testing it. Yours, I don't know if you've had mine gotten, shipped. Yours um, did ship. Actually, I just. Let's look at it again. I, I finally got a because uh, for I, for a while mm-hmm. I did I wasn't getting a tracking number, which obviously because it hadn't shipped yet. Uh, but I finally got a tracking number. They shipped through DHL. Right. Yes. Let's look at Amazon order. And yours is probably right around. Uh, mine gives me a timeline from June first to June twenty second. Okay. Um. So your first part of well, first in the middle of June. Yeah. So. Uh. But yeah, now it's saying it's shipped. Um, uh, the only thing it says on my tracking details so far, it says it has left the seller facility and is in transit to the carrier. Um, so, but yeah, here looking at pictures, um, it it looks really nice. mm -hmm. Uh, very, they, they took a leap forward on aesthetic, um, of the printer itself. Uh, it's a lot more enclosed. Looks like it has an MK8J head on it. It does actually. That's if you go through the uh, the details. It does have an MK8 on it. It is cool. a 0. 0.4 mil nozzle That's on fine. that, not 0.3. So it is a little bit bigger, and I should be able to do uh, filament testing right out of the box with it. Do wood fills and other things. Mm-hmm. Uh, looks like it does have an aluminum heat bed. Yeah, uh, and another thing because I remember I, I saw in the Me Creator too, their uh, LCD was kind of like yours. Right, it was on the top. Right, and they've they relocated down to the bottom mm-hmm. and actually gave it a nice little fascia. Looks nice. I'm I'm really excited to see it. Yeah, uh, I'm glad to see uh, one thing that the Da Vinci did that I was really disappointed in mm-hmm. is their bearings they used for the uh, the smooth rods, and uh-huh. it looks like these guys have stepped up and they went to the LM8 UU mm-hmm. uh, linear bearings, which are awesome. And also, you can see here in the picture, their Z is definitely on a mechanical end stop, which is really nice. Um, a yeah. lot better than the opticals like my Da Vinci uses. Right. Um, yeah, I'm excited. It's going to be fun. Yeah, it looks like it'll be a, a nice little thing. Uh, look forward to getting it. It looks like it could be enclosed real easily. So if you want a mm-hmm. want a breeze free chamber, do do some really good ABS prints. Mm-hmm. You could probably uh, do that pretty easily. In addition to that, uh, my wife and I went here last night, Friday night, to lo- one of the local casinos and saw a concert, saw Penn and Teller. Mm-hmm. It was an excellent show, really fun. They did a few tricks that I had seen them do in the past just with other stuff that I have watched with them in there, like the Fool Us and other things. But unexpectedly I, I did not know this but after their shows they go mingle in the lobby and they answer questions and take pictures with people so my wife and I had the opportunity to get uh, pictures with both Penn and Teller uh, they were both very very nice and uh, Penn looks good after he's lost a bunch of weight yeah but it looks good I mean yeah he doesn't look like sickly lost no. the weight um, but no. yeah I'm sure he got told by a doctor, you need to lose weight or you're going to die. Oh, <laughs> most definitely. <laughs> I'm waiting for that conversation at some <laughs> point in my life. It's coming. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You probably uh, get told about cholesterols and blood pressures and all that other fun stuff that goes with it, too. Yep. But I'm hoping to change that. And Very soon. In addition, other things that we've done, we both went to Lilac City Comic Con today. Yeah, a local Comic Con out of Spokane. Um, it was my first Comic Con. I'd never been to one. Uh, the only other one that I have attended was Dallas Comic Con. I went down for Dallas Comic Con here a few years ago, and it was May. And 
did a whole bunch of other things while we were down there, but it was uh, one of the big things we did was Comic Con, and that is my first large con. I've mm. been to things like Miss Con, which is uh, a fantasy role playing convention that happens in Missoula, and I've been to that one. I was in there what ninety four, ninety five, and uh, skipped a few years, and I've done one since, but. And it's probably been four or five, maybe six, seven years actually that I since I've been last. But uh, yeah, it's kind of a fun one. They get some some uh, bigger uh, bigger name people there. Last one of the last ones I went to had um, Steve Jackson. He does a lot of Steve Jackson games, oh. Munchkin and other things like that. But yeah. They uh that's really was my only other con experiences. This one here for being a small con, a local con, uh, thought it was pretty decent. Uh, we both stopped and talked to the the guys at the 501st booth. Mm-hmm. I think I was just expecting a little bit more, a little more excitement, and it was just kind of a here we uh, yeah we we're here type yeah. of scenario. So they had a lot of guys walking around though. Um... One of the Vaders. Mm-hmm. Um, I found out there's uh, at least two Vaders mm-hmm. locally, um, and one Kylo, because uh, Kylo was there when we right. showed up. Yep. Um, actually, that guy we spoke to, uh, he has the same set that I'm looking at buying. Right. He actually said it was really nice. Loved it. Mm-hmm. Um, he did say that because it is an original mold. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a lot of weird that you see in it, uh, a lot of dis- not so I wouldn't say discrepancies, um, but screen accurate. But to where like he held up the TK helmet, and he showed me the back of it, and it you could just totally tell it wasn't symmetrical. Right. It had a little wave to it. Um, mm-hmm. The uh, the eye lenses were kind of wavy, mm-hmm. but. Um, yeah, it was cool to talk to him, but as you said, yes, a little underwhelming. Uh, is for me, it's it's almost like that thing. Don't ever meet your heroes. Yeah, it, it really, it kind of, I do kind of chalk it up to that. Like I said, you know, I was a little disillusioned, but mm-hmm. it doesn't mean that I'm not going to still pursue it. It's something I've wanted to do for, oh hell, at least ten years. Mm-hmm. I've been looking at five hundred first since I worked at. Uh, the other ISP I used to work for. Mm-hmm. And that job was, I was laid off in 2005. Mm-hmm. So, okay, maybe 11 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> God, so get it right. Only other things I did, I got my garage cleaned out a little bit. There's been some junk that's been hovering around in there for about a, a year now that I finally went and uh, disposed of. Yeah, that's pretty much it. I, I tried getting uh, another print done, but I just too many distractions right now going happening. And that's where I'm at with it too, because I didn't print it all this week. Um, I am actually just I'm avoiding doing a thing mm-hmm. with one of my printers, and I just don't want to do it. I don't feel like doing it. And I've been spending a lot of time with kids. And what, are you talking about your bed swap? or Yeah, uh-huh. um, because I have to. And I think the way I'm going to do it is I'm just going to make it a uh, just quick connect. Um, because it's actually hardwired in. The heater is hardlined in. Gotcha. And So you're just going to clip the thermistor cables? and? Uh, it's actually, no, the thermistor I can actually pull apart. It's okay. actually on a connector. It's the actual power the leads for, to oh. the element. Okay. Um, and... And I, I don't know why. It's just one of those things, like, as soon as I do it, I'll be like, oh, yeah, when, when did I do this? A week ago. <laughs> I could have been printing. Um, but I've got many distractions. Had to go buy a vehicle and been dealing with that. Mm-hmm. Uh, a, con- a continuing problem. Um, nothing mechanically wrong. Well, I guess it is mechanically. It's electrical. It's electrical. Um but I do have to say, this is one of the rare rare sequences in my life. For some reason, and I've and then Joe's probably heard me say this, the stupid things always happen to me. Mm-hmm. Just the stupidest things, like something stupid and small, something that should have been easy to fix. What happens is the gauge cluster in my truck's dead. Mm-hmm. 
So they're like, oh, yeah, this guy will come to your work. He'll fix it. Well, he did. He couldn't fix it. They said, okay, we'll bring it back. We'll fix it. So Joe drove me down there. We dropped my truck off. They couldn't fix it. So now it has to go to a different car lot that they're, I mean, then they're paying for it all, which is awesome. And I'm not having to fight them on it. Right. But it's just like, I want my truck and I want it to work. Mm-hmm. You don't want to, you don't want to fire up your GPS on your phone just to. Just to drive and make sure I'm doing the speed limit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cops don't, uh, don't take too kindly to, do you know why I pulled you over? No. You were speeding. I couldn't tell you. My gauges are dead. <laughs> Everything. I don't even know if I have gas. That, that's this really scary one because the speeding thing, my Dodge, the speed speedometer has never worked since I bought it. Mm-hmm. And I've just gotten used to it. You can feel your speed. You know how oh, fast yeah. you're going. You match traffic and you're fine. The only time when it sucks is if like it's late at night. Super early in the morning, no one's around. Right, you're driving alone on a road. And then you're like, um, yeah, this should work. <laughs> I think I'm doing this speed. I think doesn't work with the cops, though. No. Um, <laughs> how fast were you going? Zero. <laughs> <laughs> according to this, I wasn't going anywhere. <laughs> the but, truck is off, according to my dash. <laughs> yeah. Actually, in the Dodge, it's just the speedo that doesn't work. Everything else works fine. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's just that. So... Uh, as far as things at Comic Con, uh, wife and I picked up a couple little items. Uh, we wound up we're uh, we've been watching the show Face Off since it first aired on Sci Fi. For those who are unfamiliar with Face Off, it is a competition show, but it revolves around special effects makeup. And there was a a guy that was from Idaho. His name is Race Bird. Uh, he was in one of the uh, seasons, and he was actually at the con. Becky and I are a fan of his work. We thought he did really well, seemed like a great person. And the first circuit we did through the through the convention, we walked by his booth, and Becky I was like, he's over there. If you want to go say hi? She's like, oh, no, 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 no. Really nervous, really mousy. So we did another another circuit, and... You know, we got to see all kinds of things and wound up uh, walking by, stopped, look at a few things. There was a little handbag there that was all his uh, his art. It was printed out on the cloth, and his sister has sewn it into this really nice handbag. Mm-hmm. And she was talking to uh, his uh, race's wife, who was working the booth, uh, she was talking and about some stuff, and Race was actually speaking with another gentleman at that time. And I was looking at some of his work there. He's got some really great work. And so that gentleman took off, and uh, we were about to walk away, and Becky turned and walked up to him and says, Hi, I'm, I'm, I'm Becky. I'm a real big fan. I just want to say I really like your stuff. And, and they talked for a few moments, and a few moments became a few more moments and you know what have you been doing since the show etc uh, the guy's a tattoo artist first it was first and foremost got into uh, uh, special effects stuff submitted for face off and wound up going to and winning the season that he was in mm-hmm. but he's sitting there and he's like yeah I teach at the university and this and that and I looked at him and I said so he's still doing tattoo work and he seemed like he was kind of blown back by the question, kind of like didn't expect yeah. somebody to actually re- remember that, hey, you're a tattoo artist. Yeah. And he's like, I actually took a hiatus for a little while, but I got back into it. And he does, uh, he's got a tattoo place that he works at. Oh, wow. And I said, I know your your schedule is busy. Is there, you know, what's the best time for would look at, looking at getting a tattoo done by you? He goes get hold of me via Facebook. We can figure out times based around my schedule. I would like to have a tattoo done by him. That'd be cool. My wife wants a tattoo done by him. We've seen the quality of his work. You know, we know yeah, he's a really, really nice guy. And I think that it would just be uh, kind of a cool thing. I don't have a tattoo. I know what I want. Mm-hmm. So it'll be interesting to see his take on it. But that's a, uh, that probably won't happen for six months to a year. 
Anything you see interesting at the con? Anything you wanted to touch base on? or Not at the con. Um, a lot of cool little local artists. Yeah, and so for me, I'm not a comic book person. I mm-hmm. never have been, never read them as a kid. So Star Wars was neat. Mm-hmm. Other than that, I was just, and it had a lot to do with my kids. They mm-hmm. were going nuts and being pains in the butt. Uh, yeah, I, but that's that's, that's kind of what they're the 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 conventions for is they get to see all these neat little cosplayers and everything else. Oh yeah, but uh, I unfortunately I really didn't enjoy it. For me, it was I spent uh, twenty four like thirty bucks to get in, mm-hmm. and it's very underwhelming. You have to ima- you have to keep in mind though. A, this is a one day event for six hours. Mm-hmm. This is in. Spokane, Washington. Yeah. It's not like San Diego Comic Con where you have a massive event center. They plan this thing out. They generally sell out a year in advance. Yeah. So it doesn't, you're not going to draw that crowd. This is, was specifically for, you know, local, local artists and things like that. Most everybody there was local. They mm-hmm. had the guys from Z Nation there doing panels. They had Race, who is originally from Southern Idaho. Uh, yeah, Shelly, I think it was. I just I just looked him up. Yeah, yeah. Um, there, so there was a lot of a lot of local people there. They always they've always said they want this to be local, mm-hmm. and so you really can't expect it to be that big when you're looking at keeping it. Contained as tightly as they are. Go to, you know, if you want bigger cons, uh, Emerald City Comic Con over in Seattle. That's probably going to be one you want to hit. Mm-hmm. Uh, you'll see a lot more going on there, especially with it being a bigger town. Uh, you get people down from Canada and you get people up from California to come to that. Um, but yeah, as far as it goes, I wasn't. I wasn't really disappointed in it. There's a lot of really cool artists. Uh, picked up some some pieces of art. Uh, spoke to a local uh, silk screening company mm-hmm. about the possibility of doing shirts for us. I uh, got some price quotes from them, and they're just out of Court Lane. They're down off. Are they doing uh, the Comic Con shirts? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. The 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 ones you just show up. You go to their booth. You say, "I want that color." They take that, and they. Print it right there yeah. in front of you. I saw that. And it, <clears throat> I guess that's just kind of the dad in me coming out. Like, I drug my, I had to get the kids ready. We had to, anything, anytime we go anywhere, it's a thing. Like, getting us together but that's... And all in the same car. And then the fuel to drive there and then everything. And for me, it seemed like, okay, well, you could charge me eight bucks a person and I would feel fine. At 12 bucks, I kind of just expected a little more. Eh. I, I really didn't, especially when you look at the larger cons, like Dallas Comic Con mm-hmm. was two to three times this price. Actually, it was more than two. It was probably uh, 50 bucks per person to get in. Yeah, and I would pay that for something that big. Yeah, it was like 50 56 60 dollars somewhere when around you there. You realize you're talking to the person that just got back from freaking Disneyland. Right. You don't even want to know how much they charge for those stupid tickets. Right. Um and I, I, like I said, with it being a small con, this is their second year as Lilac City Comic Con. Mm-hmm. Previous to that, it was uh, Spocon, which when I first, let's see, where did I meet him? I believe I was at Miss Con. Was it Miss Con? No, I've been mean, one of the local game shops. I spoke to the guy who was starting Spocon. Mm-hmm. And previously, Spocon, I believe, was in Con. Oh, okay. And that know. happened around October. It was kind of a... They tried making a fantasy uh, convention, mm-hmm. Incon. And Incon turned into Spocon. They took the fantasy convention, added sci-fi, so that was a sci-fi fantasy thing. Mm-hmm. And Spocon turned into Lilac City Comic Con to kind of wrap in comics with it. Yeah. Even as Incon, it was... Um, it wasn't real big. Mm-hmm. It was kind of a, a small thing. I don't think it was run real well. They wound up doing it at hotel, little 
uh, the hotel convention areas. Oh. And they're at least to the point now where they are in the convention center. If you look at the pictures between last year and this year, uh, on the uh, Lilac City Comic Con website, it looks like this year was bigger than last year. Hmm. Because they had, they had a picture of the floor, so it is growing. Oh, yeah. I'm sure it'll get, get fairly large. I mean, now that being a nerd is in, mm-hmm. uh, it'll grow fast. I would like to... I think the layout could probably be a little bit better. It um, seemed very... It's very... Even with Dallas Comic Con, though, it's very chaotic. Yeah. But... Again, it goes back to them wanting to stay with local artists, local vendors, things mm-hmm. like that. To really grow, they're going to have to open that up a little bit and try and bring in some bigger people. Yeah. It would be nice if they could do that. Uh, other local people they could have brought in, You're this will probably just go right over you, uh, Todd McFarlane, uh, one of the creators of Spawn, and one of the founding members of Image Comics was from Spokane. Oh, really? Yep. Uh, Gabe and Tycho from Penny Arcade were from Spokane, both. I did not know that. Yep. Yeah, they started Penny Arcade in Spokane uh, and then moved to Seattle. They have, there's a lot of local talent, uh, people that were from the area, got their start in the area that they could bring in. Granted, they are not, quote, local anymore, but they at least uh, were local, they they know the area, and I think it would be kind of awesome to to bring them back. Yeah. So, And they really didn't have any panels either. No, no Q&A panels, no nothing like that. It'd be nice if they could get a little uh, a little room set aside where you could do panels, uh, do autographs, things like that. Because mm-hmm. I know, like I said, uh, Z Nation was there, and they could easily have had some of the actors there and did a whole Q and A panel with signings and other things for fans. But I really think they missed out on that. I don't know if it's because they couldn't afford that or they uh, they really didn't want to. Uh, I don't know if that would have been very last minute. I don't know how far ahead they plan. So who knows? Yeah. So speaking of kidsy things, yeah, got some uh, 3D printer news here. We know Dremel has their own little 3D printer. Oh, rest and, in peace, Dremel. No, absolutely not, actually. No, my Dremel. Oh, yeah. You broke you, the other night. <laughs> yeah, your Dremel, it, it went ker spark and just died. In a, It released the smoke. It let its go juice out. <laughs> yeah, it was a smoke check, and it didn't make it through it. So recently, Dremel has shifted focus on their 3D printing towards education with the release of their 3D40, the second generation of their idea builder optimized for the classroom. Here this last week, uh, Dremel announced that they are launching a mobile app to go with the 3D40, which is available for both iOS and Android. The app will allow students and teachers to remotely monitor printing, queue multiple print jobs, and access a large library of 3D models, giving them more freedom to integrate 3D printing into classes while also allowing them to explore it outside of the classroom. Hmm. Very cool. Yeah. Uh, I really haven't seen many new printers do this, but the uh, remote printing and monitoring capabilities are becoming more common now with newly released 3D printers, but those features are especially helpful in an educational setting. With the app, users can select a model from the gallery, choose a printer they want to use, and send the information to cloud-based processing servers, which will optimize the model for the selected printer and start printing the job, no matter where the user is. That's cool. It's kind of like Octoprint. Yeah, just a little more refined, I think. Yeah, and uh, yeah. The app will then send notifications and updates about the print process. It also fits nicely into the Dremel Dreams curriculum program, allowing teachers to prepare lesson plans and models in the classroom and out of the classroom. And in addition to that, Dremel will be launching an ambassador program this month, 
uh, which, uh, which in it, it will select ambassadors to receive a th- free Dremel 3D Idea printer and 10 spools of filament for the classroom. If you want to learn more about the details and apply to become an ambassador, keep an eye on the Dremel Education's Facebook page for upcoming information. Hmm. It, well, actually, back to the Comic Con thing. Mm-hmm. Um, one thing I did think of walking around, I think that'd be an awesome thing for us mm-hmm. because we are local. You know, there. You, I don't know if you saw it. There was another uh, podcast there. Nerd I did. They were doing it. They were actually filming it. Uh, I think it was right after we met there, mm-hmm. and we walked around that backside. Mm-hmm. They were actually in the middle of talking and filming it right as we walked by. Uh, I think. There was somebody who had a camera who was going around talking to people. Mm-hmm. So I don't necessarily think it was specifically them filming for their show. Uh-huh. Uh, I believe that, and this is just speculation at this point, it was probably the Comic-Con people doing interviews and talking about people for a little promo video for next oh, year. Oh, yeah. yeah uh, it think- would make sense if they because I saw them doing it at a couple other booths. So it would make sense if that was the case, if they were... Yeah. Going around talking to other people. But I really think, I mean, for us to do something like that, that'd be pretty neat. Mm-hmm. I mean, a Comic Con's kind of a hard one for us to sell that we do really. But I mean, you could take a 3D printer to any convention and say, I can print things for this. I don't think it would be, be too difficult. I don't think it'd be that big of a stretch because we can print dice holders and other oh, uh, props, place costume stuff, uh, miniatures, all oh, kinds of everything. things. So maybe uh, maybe we should try to get a hold of them next I year. I'd say next year. And yeah, Becky was looking at that, wondering how much a, a vendor booth is. Right now, uh, this year, they sold out of all their vendor space. Oh, I bet. I mean, I said smattering, but, I mean, it was full. Yes. Yeah, it, it's a large convention center. It's not like, you know, someone's garage. <laughs> it was a legitimate convention center. Yeah. But it was because they have multiple... Uh, multiple rooms within this. It was just one room of the convention center, but they could easily have done more. Yeah. So. So, yeah, maybe we'll look into that. I think, I I, I don't think there's really anything else convention type wise that we would try to go after locally. No. But, you know, again, that's without really looking and seeing what else is out there. This is really the first time we've seen something like this and went, wow, you know, hey, we might be able to do that thing. And I really do. I really do think that we should, but we need to be able to arm ourselves with as <laughs> yeah, much info as we can because that's gonna be a, we will get a barrage of a questions. A slew of questions. You, you think that doing the school <laughs> would be difficult? I've done trade shows and stuff with the company. And uh, we've used to, I used to uh, help man the booth at the local fair. Yeah. And no. yeah, you, you sit there, you talk with people for eight hours a day. That's. It gets old. <laughs> it doesn't get old. It's interesting. You know, it, it, it's fun. You get to deal with uh, you know, all, all kinds of curious folk and mm-hmm. you just got to, got to roll with it. You got to be able to think on your feet fast. So, you know, it seems like every week we talk about a new type of filament that's coming out. Oh, yeah. Be it carbon fiber, ceramic, or anything else. Mm -hmm. Well, I got another one for you. What'd you do? So, (laughs) in recent years, many filament manufacturers have set their sights on adopting those durable and low cost plastics that are already widely used throughout society. And for a long time, one of those plastics has been absent from the list of 3D printable materials PVC. Okay. Not only is PVC the third most used plastic in the world, it's durable, cheap, resistant to elements, and fire retardant, making it the perfect uh, material for 3D printers. Australian PVC developer uh, Kemsen Plastics is now producing a 3D printable version of PVC called 3D Vinyl. Okay, whoa. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Kempson Pacific is the Australian branch of the Kempson Group and is specialized in developing and producing non-toxic and non-heavy metal stabilizer plastics. They usually work with PVC and have previously developed several industrial PVC applications. Using all that expertise, they say, they have now been able to produce an all-Australian 3D printable PVC filament. Okay. 
Over a two-year R&D project, which involved various experts such as Dr. Leo Hyde of DuPont, Mark Jovlet of PMMCO, and experts from AIL Robotics, this grew into 3D Vinyl. Copying all the key properties of PVC, 3D Vinyl filament is UV and solvent-resistant, waterproof, Group 1 fire retardant capable of AS3837 compliance, and requires 50% fewer fossil fuel inputs than many other filaments. It is also very rigid, uh, features excellent flow properties and heat stability, and doesn't even suffer from warping or poor bed adhesion. 3D vinyl also produces fantastic support structures. Kemsen will now be looking to commercialize 3D vinyl 3D printing filament. To do so, they are uh, setting up regional alliances with PVC industry leaders Wellvik and CSIRO in the Australian, New Zealand, and East Asian markets. Kemsen has also set up a partnership with Functionalize, a U.S.-based developer of 3D conductive filaments, to reach North American and European markets. Very cool. Yeah, we were talking about joining the 501st. PVC is the thing. You can print our Stormtrooper armor. can be made in one of two things, ABS or PVC. Or hips. When you, when you buy it from a vacuum farmed, mm-hmm. you have the option of ABS or PVC. One is more flexible than the other, but the drawback is yellowing. Yes, the PVC does yellow. Yes. Without um, ABS is a little more rigid than the the PVC, but it doesn't doesn't yellow as much. But yeah, I I thought that was pretty awesome. That was going through my news. Yeah. I'm like, hey, what what? <laughs> That's a thing. PVC? <laughs> what? Huh? Huh? So, so you can do PVC fittings for pipes if you want to do your own um, drip gardens, things like that. Yeah. So now, rather than being stuck with uh, ABS or PLA, now PVC is at some point going to be available that we can okay. start using that. Oh, speaking of ABS, mm-hmm. I got a package from our friend in the 3D printing industry. Oh, you did? <laughs> Four kilogram spools of ABS from... From the company? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Just... At random, huh? No, he called. He that was. I, he talked to oh. me the other day, and he's like, "Hey, we've got some leftover ABS. You want it?" Uh, sure. <laughs> oh, he had some leftovers. Just stuff. The or? company did. They're getting rid of it. Their original ABS filament that they uh, developed, mm-hmm. and I think you got your hands on some. Uh, no, I did. Two white, two black. So cool. You, you want a spool of white and black? I will take a spool of white and black. Full kilogram spools too. Wow. I'm surprised to see their logo on a kilogram spool. Yeah, they must be uh that must be an internal thing. Uh I they... think they're branching out and making the larger spools now. Really? Hmm. Yeah. But they have a new type of ABS filament that he was telling me about that uh he said he's gonna be back in Spokane in a month or two. And I said I'll definitely be interested in picking some up from him. Yeah. It's uh doesn't warp. Oh, this is their new um, their new stuff. I've seen on their website. They're, mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and yes, uh, sorry, we're saying this. It almost sounds like an inside conversation. Uh, a lot of the stuff we we talked to our mutual friend in the industry, uh, we just can't disclose. Um, he's asked multiple times not for us not to, so we don't. We'll still talk about the things, and you'll you'll hear about the things, but not yeah, really. Yeah, won't tell you. Do. Won't tell you which which buddy it is. You've got a couple. <laughs> so, don't think you know. Because <laughs> <laughs> you don't. <laughs> so, the Overwatch beta was actually extended. You got your wish. It got extended till uh, 10 hours. It doesn't matter. <laughs> you, you, you still got to play Monday. I got to play Monday night. Yeah. So, and we all did. We actually We'd, got, uh, it was a group of us from work. And, all six. It was a full team at one uh, point. Five from work and then uh, one who was a, a brother-in-law of one of the, the people we work oh, yeah. with. Okay, I forget that. But it, it was a we filled out a great whole team. game. It yeah, was a it whole was team. Fun. <laughs> I wound up playing until well, we wound up playing till about eleven thirty. So I had to on stop a work night. <laughs> on a work night. Yeah. So 
I was going through some news and I found out that Overwatch <laughs> is uh, not going to take cheating lightly. Yeah, it's like first offense perma ban. Yeah, I was reading that actually at the beginning of the podcast. Yep. Yeah, their community man manager, uh, uh, Lyria. Uh, stated on the Battle.net forums that Blizzard is taking a firm stance against cheaters in Overwatch. You do not get warnings, you do not get strikes, and no temporary suspensions. You get caught once, and you're out. Full stop. Yeah, Ben Hammer will smack you in the face. Yeah, as if a player is found to be using hacks, bots, uh, third-party software, or cheats of any kind that provide any sort of unfair advantage, that player will be permanently banned from the game. Cheating not only undermines the spirit of fair play, it also diminishes the fun and enjoyment of others. Well, and I'm glad... Okay, so Blizzard has a very horrible track record with ban waves. Oh, God. Wow. From WoW, wow to Diablo. Um, I don't think you... Because you can use third-party software in Hearthstone. A no. lot of people use deck trackers. And Blizzard says that they will investigate players who are reported through the in-game client. However... You do need to be aware of some things before you report somebody as a lead hacksaw oh, yeah. in Overwatch. And first thing is, is playback through the game's uh, kill cam does not always accurately reflect what has happened. So you can appear a little different because of lag and other things within the game. Yeah, the server perceives you differently than you perceive right. it. Right. So... It may not look exactly as you perceived it, so mm -hmm. you have to keep that in mind. Any in-game bugs can appear, make it appear somebody is cheating. So even though it looks like they shot you through a wall or something, the camera can be messing with you, or a bug could be messing with you. Yeah. And that player might just be really good. Yeah, and well, a lot of people spend many, many hours at first-person shooters. Oh, Some people, this is their lives. I have played first-person shooters since 1994. Mm -hmm. That was when I first played Doom. My first person, first first-person shooter at MissCon. From that point on, I have been pretty heavy into first-person shooters. Yeah, I've played quite a bit of them. My game of choice. I played, the the biggest game that I played, I was in a, a competitive clan, I was ranked, uh, was Soldier Fortune 2. Mm. And I haven't been in a, uh, really haven't been captured by a game that much where I played as heavily as I did with that one. But Overwatch is probably going to be pretty close to that. I yeah. played a lot of... There's going to be ranked play. Yeah. And, and ranked team play. Yes, and I've <laughs> I've played uh, the, the CODs, and I've played the Battlefields, and they're all fun and stuff, mm -hmm. but this, I think, is right along the lines of those uh, old uh, Soldier of Fortune Captured Flag type games. I really like, like the Halo. competitive games yeah. like that, so I look forward to it. I know there are people that are that good out there. I've played against those people. Mm -hmm. I've been that person. Yeah. Uh, it's just when you know the maps, you know how people are going to react. You know. Oh, it's like walking into CSGO and never playing before. Holy cow, I bought CSGO on the Steam sale last summer. Uh -huh. And I was like, oh, yeah, I'm going to play this. And I've got, I think, two hours on record. Uh -huh. And I, I'm horrible at it. The whole mm -hmm. no aim thing threw me off. Um, and I knew I watched CSGO on YouTube, right. I, I watched Anders L and he's like world ranked in CSGO mm -hmm. and, uh, but yeah, I mean, you walk into it and you just slaughtered. I mean, it can happen in COD, but oh yeah, COD's not near as bad. COD's much easier to pick up and you can spray and pray and get kills. Um, Overwatch, not so much. I mean, there's definitely, there's that base point of, oh, we're just playing and having fun, but you can totally tell there's going to be a turning point in they, this game. Their net code seems to be pretty, pretty on. Yeah. I, mean, I see that, uh, hitbox locations and things like that, it's actually fairly accurate. Yeah. 
It's not, not a giant polygon around your tune. No, and <laughs> it's not like in uh, Call of Duty where if you shoot somebody in the foot, you you're basically taking them off at the head. Yeah. <laughs> Shoot somebody at the ankles, headshot. Nice. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> Him assist, um, what? What? <laughs> yes. So, yeah. But, I, yeah, they've taken their time with Overwatch. They're producing what seems like a very polished product. Mm-hmm. The beta, I do have to say, I was super impressed. I mean, the open beta was a stress test for their servers. Mm-hmm. One point, and I think it was my end that I had lag. Yeah, I don't recall any necessarily any lag within the game. Um yeah, it's uh, it was pretty spot on. But I mean, I mean, they're Blizzard now. The they only, know the only issue that I had, and this will this will come with time, and that is the time it took to find a match at some some points. Single player, if you're, I don't know if you ever joined up as a as a standalone person, but it was less than a yeah. minute every time I did. Right. It's, as it's, soon as we teamed up, right. It was five minutes sometimes. And now that, that's what I was getting at is. It wasn't that bad if you're like Becky and myself were on. It didn't take us long to find games, but once you started get pushing five or even six people, then it had issues finding groups. Yeah, and then which it, it's it's kind of weird because you have a full team. All it has to do is find six other random people out there. Yeah. To to fill the other side, which I didn't, I don't think it should have been that hard for it to do, but. They're also looking at the skill level of people because there are times when we would play games and it would end and be like, hey, you're going to a different lobby because you're better than those people. Yeah. Uh, so they, they and even it's on the trying to balance side, it. Even on the flip side, when we did suck a few games, they were like, yeah, let's go find someone more your speed. Right. It actually, it, it tries to find, because yeah. It tries to find somebody within your skill skill uh, skill level, so it bu- it would bump you up, and you lose a few games, and they probably and the game would had to adjust and go okay, maybe not quite that hard. <laughs> yeah, well, and I also I think they put a lot of time into their matchmaking. Mm-hmm. Um, not only from that, but th- again to the ping or the, the lag thing. I mm-hmm. think it was doing a lot of its matchmaking based on pings, so they're trying to find very similar pings. Mm-hmm. Um, granted, their servers are based out of L.A., so we're fairly close. Yeah, we are. We probably don't have many hops between us and them. No, I, I would say three. Yeah. I mean, if we counted us as a hop, it would be us, the IX, the Pit, and them. Right. So I and that just depends on where they're routed to. Yeah. Well, I remember back in WoW, I never had a problem with Ping living here. Yeah. Uh, ever. Yeah, no. It's... We are, our, our connection is, our upline is pretty decent, so. Mm-hmm. But besides that, I really don't have a lot else to cover. Yeah, uh, I, I said there were some other news articles that I wanted to, to touch base on here, but. And we're also trying out a new daytime. We're trying to find a time that works better for both of us, that it's not do something, oh crap, we got to get back to home so we can go do this. Right. And podcast, and then you have like this broken up evening. Yeah, I don't. We're trying to do it where we don't split our Saturdays in half. Have a, a morning, have to come back, and then do the podcast, and then have an evening. We're trying to just make it flow a little bit better. Uh, we've also changed the format of the podcast a little bit. It's a little more open. I'm not doing a lot of uh, mm-hmm. processing on the backside. Yeah, uh, and. Knock out a few things, do a couple little edits, but really it's, for the most part, raw now. Yeah. <laughs> and, I mean, of course we listen to it, and then, of course, we're biased. We like our podcast because that's why we do a podcast. But I don't think it's taken a hit. If you guys have any feedback, please let us know. Yeah. Um, I, Because, I mean, we banter. We've bantered quite a few things. We've we, In this podcast, we've gone from talking about a comic uh, Comic Con to me buying a pickup to Joe and Becky seeing Penn and Teller. Oh yeah, and but I think it flows a lot better for us. Um, it's not it's not so stuffy and, and free talking more. In addition to feedback on the episode, if you have any questions, uh, 3D printer questions or gaming questions or anything that's kind of relevant to what we do, technical questions even, yeah. 
go to our website, uh, hit us up on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, send us your questions, uh, looking to have some, some stuff, more stuff up on YouTube. YouTube has been, uh, lagging behind. I'm working on getting that corrected. Have no fear. We have not forgotten about YouTube. <laughs> um, and if you really like what we do, throw us some support, go to Patreon, become a patron. Uh, my, now that my printer is printing at least in its primary with its primary, uh, extruder, the secondary extruder, it's, uh, a little bit, the nozzle size is a little bit off. That's why I'm looking at getting not only one of the reasons why I'm getting the new nozzles, but I want to get that taken care of. And then we'll start selling some dual color prints <laughs> and, uh, probably get my 3d hubs account set up. If you want to order prints from me through 3 Hubs or through Ender, if he gets his set up, do so. All of it will help benefit what we do here and help just make it that much better. Mm -hmm. But besides that, I think that's it for this week. Yeah, I'm Andrew. I'm Joe. And remember, if you can imagine it, you can print it.